Hi students. So let us start a flash review of metallurgy and video science that we have handled in our online classes. So first of all, I will give a briefing about the course objective of metallurgy and material science. Uh, the main objective of this course is to provide uh, fundamental science relevant to materials. It provides a fundamental science which is relevant to uh, materials. Then it is. Uh, it also provides uh, physical concepts of uh, atomic radius, uh, uh, atomic structure, chemical bonding, crystalline and non-crystalline materials, and the defects of crystalline structures. Then grain size uh, and strengthening mechanism that we will deal in upcoming classes. Then heat treatment of metals. Why we need to provide heat treatment um, of various materials uh, with chemical mechanical properties and change in their structure. Okay. It also enables students to be aware of the behavior of materials in engineering application also and also to select the materials for various engineering applications. Uh, the students will be able to choose which material will be most apt for a particular application after studying this subject. Then it provides an understanding to the cause behind material failure or metal failure and the deformation of that particular material in while using particular applications. Then it helps in determining the properties of unknown materials and also develop an awareness to apply this knowledge in material design. So this subject is very valuable subject for mechanical engineers uh, concerning to mechanical engineers. Okay, then uh, uh, I will go on to the um, okay. So uh, I hope you are interested with this uh, pictures. Um, one of the latest vehicles. This other vehicle. Okay. So what you see here is that. Uh, in these in these vehicles, we are using certain materials for making these vehicles. Okay, now these the different parts of the vehicles are made by different materials. These materials were not chosen randomly; these were chosen perfectly, and exactly that material, particular material can only be used for that particular purpose. So, how did the engineers choose these materials? So, this subject provides a clear idea about how to choose a particular material for a particular application. So, this this particular subject this this shows the importance of this particular subject for mechanical engineering students. Okay, so when you look at the tires, so the material used for making the tires is different from the material used for building the body and the frame and the silencer. Uh, and the seat, the material used for making the seat, how did they choose the material for making the uh, tank, etc. So, similarly in this car also, we, we can see different materials being used. Okay, oh, these are beautiful cars for you. So, the main objective of our first chapter, uh, before going into the first chapter, we will learn about what is material science. So, here we are having two different things, metallurgy and material science. So, in this chapter, we will be introducing the basics of metallurgy and material science and then why study the subject uh, is so important for mechanical engineers, then how engineering materials can be classified based on the uh, types, then different levels of structure of materials, the factors to be considered while se selecting a material for specific applications. Okay, these things we will come across uh, this uh, in this particular uh, module. So first of all, what is material science? Okay, so this you know, so the title of the subject is metallurgy and material science. From that, uh, first we will learn about material science. So what is material science? Uh, the word material does not refer to all the matter in the universe. Whatever we see in the universe is not does not uh, represent material. So what does uh, material represent? The word science does not include everything in physical and life sciences. So the term material as a part of in, an inanimate matter which is useful to engineer in practice of his profession so the word material is an inanimate matter uh, which is useful to engineer in practice for his profession so uh, um, in a, we are having different types of materials that is a liquid in the liquid form gaseous form and other useful uh, form to engineers but all these materials are not engineering materials so uh, what materials we do refer for engineering materials? Engineering materials refer only to materials in solid state. Okay, that is the first and most important point that you have to learn. Engineering materials refer to materials uh, which are in the solid state. So and similarly, science um, is only limited to meaning science of physics and chemistry and not the entire science. Okay, so uh, engineering material is the one which is uh, the materials which are in the solid state and we are not uh, looking into materials which are in the liquid form and gaseous form. So we, uh, we are also using oil, water, air, oxygen, etc. These are in the liquid form and gaseous form. So we are not considering that. We are, all engineers are considering, uh, when, when, when an engineer say that uh, the engineering material is concerning to solid state materials. Okay, 
so don't forget that that's one important uh, point that you have to remember and then similarly science also has only limited meaning science of physics and chemistry okay so at point on some point at some point of time or the other an engineering problem involves issues related to material selection when uh, in the career of an engineer he will meet this problem that uh, we have to select a particular material for a particular application so he have to choose a material so uh, how can he choose that particular material so that's a problem okay then understanding the behavior of material particularly structure property correlation will help selecting suitable material for a particular application so this the second point is the Pro solution to the problem how he can choose a particular material how he can choose he can choose by studying the structure property correlation behavior of the material particularly based on the structure property that is this is the main important thing that material science deals with okay structure property relationship that is a particular material structure leads to the property of that particular material structure here means the not only the outer structure that we have that we see of that particular material but also the microscopic structure that um, we can see in the microscope starting from the arrangement of atoms molecules etc so structure of a particular material leads to the property of that particular material so this particular structure if you know the structure property relationship we will be able to select a suitable material for a particular application so that's the second point then third point the objective of the studying material science is to develop this understanding that is the uh, these two under points are the uh, main importance points for uh, understanding the behavior of a particular material so structure leads to property and property leads to the behavior of that particular material so these are the few materials that we see in our day to day life we can't think of a day without uh, using any of these materials that uh, surround us so how are these materials made and how are these materials chosen these things will, uh, will be more we will, be, will become more clarity when you learn this particular subject okay another uh, different types of materials that we see in our day-to-day -day life so here coming to the structure property relation what is material science so material science can be broadly defined as a correlation between microstructure and property material science can be broadly defined as a correlation between microstructure and property so here what we see is a tetrahedron which is, which is um, showing that structure leads to the property when you see here structure leads to property okay property leads to the performance of that particular material so how we can obtain this particular structure this particular material uh, this particular structure can be obtained by pro, uh, using a particular types of processing and all these together forms the characterization of the particular material okay so structure leads to property property leads to performance and performance leads to processing and processing leads to structure this shows the characterization of that particular material What is structure? Here structure means the arrangement of internal components of matter in a material. And what is property? Response of the material when exposed to an external stimuli. Okay. Arrangement of internal component of matter in material and property deals with response of the material when exposed to external stimulus. Okay. When we are uh, providing an external stimulus, how the material behaves or responds. Okay. And structure uh, leads to the arrangement of the internal components of microscopic arrangement material my, my, microscopic matter uh, that is atoms molecules arrangements etc see the importance of material material in engineering material engineering is that um, this shows an importance the, we we have seen the titanic film most of you might have seen the film uh, the failure of that particular uh, ship was due to improper selection of a material okay what caused the failure the titanic collided with iceberg the hull steel and the wrought iron rivets failed because of the brittle fracture what happened in the titanic is that the hull steel and the wrought iron hull steel and wrought iron rivets flayed rivets rivets are used for joining the ship uh, uh, hull uh, uh, hull steels okay so what happened is that these materials failed due to because of brittle fracture and what led to brittle fracture brittle fracture occurred because the ship collided with iceberg okay so Cause of brittle fracture included low temperature, high impact loading, and high sulfur content. The material had high sulfur content, and also the uh, atmospheric temperature was very low, and uh, also leading to high impact loading with the iceberg. The ship collided with the iceberg, so that led to high impact loading, and the temperature was very low, and there was high sulfur content. What What is the issue with temperature? What, uh, what happens is that when the, the material which behaved normal with, with uh, which had a very high strength and high ductile behavior 
uh, at no normal temperature it behaved as a brittle material at low temperature what do you understand by that at normal temperature the material was highly ductile but when the temperature was reduced to sub zero level what happened is that the material behaved as a brittle material that is uh, it behaved as a behaves similar to a glass material okay what is the speci speciality of gla glasses glasses are very brittle it is not ductile okay glass materials break suddenly okay catastrophic failure occurs for glass materials without any uh, what a plastic deformation is there any plastic deformation while uh, when we, when you see the breaking of a glass material no you can't uh, you can't identify a, a, a plastic deformation it's uh, the deformation the failure occurs suddenly all of a sudden okay so that's the problem with brittle materials the failure occurs all, all of a sudden without giving any notice okay but if the material is ductile it shows initially shows if the impact is very high what happens when when a car collides it shows ductile failure okay ductile fracture that is the material gets uh, deformed uh, after a repeated deforming only the material fails okay that that's uh, that's a safety measure but what happened at low temperature that particular material behaved as a brittle material instead of being a ductile material actually the material used was ductile but due to low temperature effect the material behaved like ductile material so steel structures ductile to brittle at sub zero level that steel structures turn to ductile material turned to brittle material at sub zero level okay that was the main causes of failure for titanic okay next coming to uh, our iron pillar of delhi what's the specialty of iron pillar of delhi it was uh, built during the um, period of chandragupta second okay that is something around uh, 3 315 chandragupta era okay chandragupta era i don't know the uh, year but uh, it was too much old uh, that particular pillar was very is very, very old but um why did it it corrode that why is that material same as it as it was in as it was built only very less corrosion can be found okay why is it not corroding the reason for it's not corrosion is the high phosphorus content high phosphorus content it had acted as a protecting shield for the carbon high, uh, iron material okay high resistance to corrosion even even layer of crystalline iron hydrogen phosphate hydrate forming on the high phosphor content iron which serves to protect it from the effects of delhi climate okay even with the fluctuating climate iron did not corrode why because of the high phosphor content in iron so that shows the uh, uh, behavior of the material uh, material uh, due to the presence of an external material that particular material acted as a shield for iron okay so th that is the importance of material science okay then other um, what is fuse wire what is the use of fuse wire you have you will be using fuse wire in every houses what's the importance of fuse wire so low voltage fuse elements are made of copper fuse elements of fast acting fuses high voltage fuses are primarily made of silver silver plated copper is also commonly used as a rule fuse elements of time delay fuses contains low melting point materials example tin zinc etc okay so here we are uh, discussing about low voltage fuses high voltage fuses uh, normally a uh, few elements uh, uh, of time delay fuses contain low melting point mat materials that is the uh, main uh, point in using fuse is, fuse material is that it should fail suddenly okay even there is a very low uh, voltage fluctuation or if there is a very uh, instantaneous high voltage fluctuation the fuse material should fail otherwise that will affect the um, equipment that is used in the house so these are the uh, application that we this is the way that we choose for a material for making fuse wires even when we uh, learn about human history uh, we come to know that uh, each age each uh, ancient ages were mentioned by the uh, material that has been used during those times that is stone age when humans started using stone as their main weapon for making weapons then copper age then bronze age then iron age based on the um, application of these materials during those ages okay so that much importance is there for that particular material in our history so science of materials engineering has been used since the ancient times that are referred as the even our history has been defined by materials we use that's copper age stone age bronze age iron age then the mechanical properties of engineering materials these are the basic mechanical properties of engineering materials what are they strength toughness hardness hardenability brittleness malleability ductility creep resilience fatigue so these are the basic properties of a mechanical properties of engineering materials then coming to atomic structure so what all things are they uh, when we are look at the microstructure so before telling about the atomic structure what are the different levels of structure what are the different levels of structure that you know 
so we have already mentioned that structure leads to property so we the the uh, it is very important to learn about the structure of a particular material so what are the different structures levels of structures so we, uh, first uh, we can say that macro structure that is the structure that we see that is visible to the naked eye the uh, the structure which is visible to the naked eye can be mentioned as a macro structure then micro structure micro structure refers to what optical microscope that uh, that we see in the optical microscope can be mentioned as a micro structure then substructure what are substructures it is also again uh, used by viewing microscope uh, but with higher magnification uh, optical microscope with a higher magnification so that can be mentioned as a substructure then crystal structure what is crystal structure it provides a detailed atomic level arrangement of atoms within a material okay so the detailed atomic level arrangement of atoms within a material can be mentioned as crystal structure then electronic structures electronic structures uh, deals with the arrangement of electrons in the outermost shells and all so uh, arrangement of electrons in the outermost shells uh, uh, of each atom can be mentioned as electron structure so uh, for this normally we use the spectroscopic techniques uh, for uh, to understand the electronic structure then we have the nuclear structure so um, so these are the basic uh, levels of structure so first we mentioned that micro micro structure then micro structure then substructure then crystal structure then electronic structure then nuclear structure okay so when we are dealing with the atomic structure the, what is atomic structure atomic structure means basic unit of the matter and it is a basic unit of an atom what is an atom it is a basic unit of matter and it defines the structure it consists of basically of nucleus and which is surrounded by neutrons so first we have the center at the center we have the nucleus in the inside the nucleus we have the neutrons and the protons and surrounding this uh, nucleus we have the negatively charged particles called the electrons